Good morning, viewers. Welcome to Strange Devotions for this morning. Topic for this morning the benefit of transfiguration and transformation. Topic one more time benefit of transfiguration and transformation. Under the series, benefit of true fasting and prayers. Post look at key text, second book of Second Corinthians, chapter 3, from verse 17 down to 18. But let's pray for a minute. Father, we we'll thank you for the prayers in our nostri. It is a privilege to be alive this morning. What is taking for granted, but I'll come say thank you. We said in Second Peter 1 3, according to divine power, is giving us all things that pertain unto life of ungodliness through the knowledge of the world. We've come to hear and to receive the knowledge of the world this morning, but I will speak to us and God's understanding. Grant us grace to become to us of the world when Jesus can be present. And I'll talk to you one more time. Benefit of transfiguration and transformation. On that is it's benefit of true fasting and prayers. Host my own verse out, look at K. Text taken from the book of Second Corinthians, chapter 3, from verse 17 down to 18. I read from verse 17. It said, Now the Lord God is that spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty, as it is said. But we all with open face beholding us in the glass, the glory of the Lord are changed or are transformed or are transfigured in the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. I pray, as you wait upon the Lord to take on the Spirit, you have an encounter with the Spirit of God and you will be transfigured in the name of Jesus. For there is in Ephesians chapter 34, from verse 27 down to 35, and the Lord said unto Moses, Write this word, for after the tenor of this word, I have made a covenant with thee, and with Israel, and with the twenty-eight. And he was there with the Lord forty days and forty nights, and he did neither eat nor drink water, and he wrote upon the tables the words of the covenant, the ten commandments. And it was twenty nine. And it came to pass, when Moses came down from Mount Sinai, were the two stones with the two tablets of testimony in Moses' hand, when he came down from the mountain, that Moses was not that the skin of his face shone while he talked with him. And he was 30. And when Aaron and all the people of Israel saw Moses, behold, the skin of his face shone, and they were afraid to come near. He was transfigured, he was transformed to a God like image of the Holy. And I pray that would be our end, even today, even the small, even throughout this year, in the name of Jesus. And it was that John of the world, all children of Israel came near, and he gave them in commandment all that the Lord has spoken of him. In the Mount Sinai, and verse 33, until Moses had done speaking with them, he put a veil on his face. And verse 34, the children of Israel saw the face of Moses, that the skin of Moses' face shone. And Moses put the veil upon his face again, and he went in to speak with him. And the Father did Matthew chapter 17, verse 1 and 6, and then after six days, Jesus took care of Peter, James, and John, his brother, and bring them up into a high mountain of path, and it was two. And was transfigured before them, and his face shined as the sun, and his room was white as the light. I pray today you will be transfigured into pure righteousness in the name of Jesus. No more we will be in doubt if you are a Christian or not. In Jesus' name, as we said, and behold, there appeared unto them Moses and Elias talking with him, and of course, the disciples who saw this miracle, they began to ask, So, while he is speak with them, behold. Behold, the angel of the Lord appeared. Behold, a bright cloud overshadowed them, and behold, the voice of the crowd, he said, This is my beloved song, in whom I am well pleased. Say, Hear he him. And number six, all the disciples had it, they fell in their faces, and they were so afraid. At last, what I again, Luke chapter 4, Luke chapter 14, from what? Luke chapter 4, from what? 1 to 15. And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan, was led by the Spirit in the wilderness. He was there for 40 days and for 49. And he was 49. And Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out of him a fame out of him throughout all the regions was transfigured. The celebrity overnight by an encounter. I see God transforming you to a celebrity in your career in all that you do in the name of Jesus. Topic one more time benefits of transfiguration and transformation. And that is it. Benefit of true fasting and prayer. Host look at here, text in the book of Second Corinthians chapter 3 from 17 to 18. We read that for the next verse of chapter 4 from 27 to 35. Matthew 17, 1 to 6, Luke 14, 1. Luke 4, rather, 1 to 15. Please, at the leisure time, read the scriptures again 
You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Thinking calm. Until you are spiritually transfigured, you can't be physically transformed in glory. Do that again. Until you are spiritually transfigured, you can't be physically transformed in glory. Think about it. So we'll look at a topic, the benefit of transfiguration and transformation, and that teaches you some of the benefit of true fasting and prayers. First, by introduction, let's recognize that among the benefits of fasting and prayers is transfiguration and transformation. We live in a world where the spirit of iniquity is so much at work, and the garment of filthiness is forcefully clothed on people in the story of Daniel. Meaning, without transfiguration, one would normally and naturally live in sin in this world. And no wonder you have people say it's impossible for one to be righteous on his head. All these attestations to the fact that the spirit of iniquity and the kind of feeling is forcefully placed on people, and people are limited. They are righteous living, believing that it's impossible to live righteous and such. They just conform to the pattern of the world. I pray you will be different in Jesus' name. We said by introduction, one of the benefit of fasting and prayers is transfiguration and transformation. Or why for say we live in a world where the spirit of iniquity is so much at work and the garment of filthiness is forcefully clothed on people, meaning without transfiguration, one will naturally and normally live in sin in this world. Below, the truth about true fasting and prayer is that it doesn't only bring and deliver physical blessings, but more of the spiritual blessings. And of course, the spiritual blessings precede the physical blessings. And I pray you will be spiritually blessed today and I will transcend into physical blessings in Jesus and as such, we shall be looking at the benefit of transfiguration and transformation on this land. And I pray God will open our understanding and grant us an encounter with his transfigured power as Jesus had and as Moses had in the name of Jesus. Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 1 down 11. The word of Nehemiah the son of Achilia. And it came to pass in the month in the 20th year as I was in Susan the Palace. And I was two that an only one of my brethren came here and set him in of Judah. And I asked him concerning the Judah I escaped, which were left of Captivity, uh, concerning Jerusalem. And he told me that the remnants that left of the captivity, and was three in the province, and great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem was broken down, and the gates therefore were born with fire. And in verse 4, and he came to pass, and I had this word that I sat down, and I wept, and I mourned certain days, and fasted, and fasted, and prayed before the God of heaven. Paul was praying for transfiguration, transformation, so he could go and rebuild that bond down city and it was 11. And look at one of his prayers, O Lord, I beseech thee, let now thy ear be attentive to the prayer of thy servant and to the prayer of thy servant who desire to hear thy name and prosper, I pray thee, thy servant this day, and grant him mercy, grant me what? Grant him transfiguration and the transformation of mercy in the sight of this one referring to the king. Say for I was a cop there. I was only I stood before the king in chapter two and requested of Timber to go and build a city that the same king had destroyed. And the king gave him everything. Why? Because he was transfigured to a glory like human. I pray you be transfigured to glory indeed in Jesus' name. In the name of chapter five, from verse fourteen, from verse six to verse fifteen, setting fifty two days, this world was built. By this young man who had other guys that was working with him. I pray you'll be transfigured, you'll be transformed to a wonder even to yourself in the name of Jesus. You will begin to command amazing exploits, amazing testimonies that people will indeed are claiming that God is with you. That will be your testimony in Jesus' name. In the name of chapter 5, from verse 14, down to 19, the same young child talking about Nehemiah, who was a servant in the king's palace. Turned out to become a governor. He was appointed a governor, said he was tomorrow, from the time that I was appointed to be the governor in the land of Judah. From the 20th year, even unto the 230th year of Adidas, the king, that is 20 years, I and my brethren have not eaten of the bread of the governor. Yet I continue, verse 16, I continued in the work of this war. It have brought we any land, and all my servants were gathered theta onto the war. So transfiguration and transformation bring people into beautiful leadership, into true leaders and leaders. You can see one of Nehemiah as he called transfiguring you to a leader in your field in the name of Jesus. Daniel chapter 9 from verse 2 down to 23, verse 3 said, And I set my face unto the Lord to seek by prayer and supplication with fasting and sacrifice and ash. And verse 4 said, I prayed unto the Lord my God and made my confession and said, 
Oh Lord, the great and dreadful God, give me the covenant and mercy to them that love him and to them that keep his commandment. Said in verse 20, and whilst I was speaking and praying and confessing my sin and sin of my people, and presenting my supplication before the God, for the holy mountain of my God, verse 21 said, Yeah, while I was speaking in prayer, even the angel, even the one Hebrew whom I've seen in the vision, appeared to me. He said, being caused to fly swiftly, touch me about the time of the evening of the vision. And I was turning to him, informed me and talked with me and said, Oh Daniel, I am now come forth to give these skills and understanding. I pray in this season, God will appear to you. You will be transfigured, you will be transformed in the name of Jesus. Complete that scripture down to verse 23. I don't even call time. Look for verse 14 said that Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into the heaven and went out and came of him throughout all the region. He became a star overnight after transfiguration from the prayer and fasting mountain. I pray at the end of this adventure, as you descend from this prayer and fasting mountain, after the 21 is adventure, go will turn into a celebrity. You will be to a one that you saw unto your world around you in the name of Jesus. Very quickly, we'll be looking at subtopic, real benefit of true fasting and prayer. Now we've seen two pointers for us. So the first point, the benefit of setting for the top, the benefit of what second one at the top. There's another point yesterday, the benefit of great power. Please don't want to beg you for reference to the teaching series on this platform. You'll be blessed in Jesus' name. Today we're looking at the top point. So topic one more time, real benefit of true fasting and prayers. We're looking at the benefit of transfiguration and transformation. This is a total shift from the natural human realms to the divinity realms, that is, the glory realms, where one is totally changed to the God like image in all aspects of life. I think that again, we're looking at subtopic real benefit of true fasting and prayers, or we're dwelling on the benefit of transfiguration and transformation. We said this is a total shift from the natural human realms to the divinity realms, that is, the glory realms, where one is totally changed to the God like image in all aspects of life. I see all areas of the life being transfigured to glory like to the Christ like life in the name of Jesus. Exodus 34 from verse 27 down to 35. We read the story of Moses there, how he went to the mountain praying and fasting for 40 days, a day camping with God. And when he descended the glory of God filled him up, he was physically transfigured. He was transformed a glory image. No one could look at his face. He was glittering and shining literally. He has to put a veil to cover his head, cover his face before he could talk to children of Israel and before he could talk to his servant, Herod. I pray. After this people want this adventure, God will literally transform and transfigure you. You will become untouchable in the name of Jesus. Only good news of glory will come from you in Jesus. Don't forget Daniel 2, Daniel chapter 2 from verse 16 to 48. He was on a prayer mountain in the city for his people. Say so he read from the book of Isaiah the number of years that he should spend in captivity and when their freedom should come. And he began to pray. Lord, it is time for our freedom. He began to fast and to pray. And the angel gave it, appeared to him. And Daniel was transfigured. Look at the great exploit that he has done. And read that story down uh verse 48, Daniel 2, 16 and 48. Second Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 17 down to 18. Our anchor scripture. He said, we all will open faith. He said, now, the Lord is that spirit. And I said, the word is for the Lord, there is liberty. So we need to have an encounter with the liberty. One verse say was again. But we all, not limited to some people, we all with open, open face, beholding as in a glass, the glory of the Lord had changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the spirit of the Lord. I pray. As you wait upon the Lord, as you call upon the Lord in truth and spirit, literal glory will be visible. No one will see you and do you hurt anymore. You're going to bear the mark of Christ in your forehead. No one shall hurt you. No accident found you. Imagine God with you having an accident. It's not possible. Imagine if you're a girl and you around you and you're being sick, being like your hospital bed. It's not possible. I pray. The same dimension of favor, glory, and transfiguration of enjoy. The Lord will grant it to you in the name of Jesus. In case you don't know my testimony, the Lord led me to fast and to pray for one year, and I did that. Just descended uh, last year, precisely, 
believe you me, I haven't changed. I know a lot of addictions I've been going through. I've walked past them as it never exists. No more loss of the flesh, no more loss of the eyes, no more pride of life. The Lord broke me to what is using me today. I pray. God will transfigure you. God will transform you in the name of Jesus. Mark chapter 9, verse 2 down to 7. Said, and after 6 days, Jesus took Peter and James and John and led them into the high mountain of God by themselves. And he was transfigured. He was transformed before them. The verse 3 said, And his raiment became shining, exceeding white as snow, so as no fuller on earth can white them. And it was said, and they appeared unto him Elias with the Moses. Look at it. men who have what the testimony of transgression and Elias, talking about Elijah and Moses, and they were talking about Jesus. And it was far from Peter answered and said, Jesus, Mother, it is good for us to be here, and let us make three tabernacles, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elias. And it was seven, he said, and there was a cloud that overshadowed them, and a voice out of heaven saying, This is my beloved son, hear him, hear him. I pray the Lord will hear you as you have an encounter with God transfigured power in the name of God. Remember, Jesus was in the wilderness in Luke chapter 4, from verse 1 down to 15. He continued in that transfiguration, being allowed that transformation to weigh him down. He didn't go about jumping about and say, The Lord have given me a vision, the Lord have what appeared to me now. He even charged the disciples not to tell anyone what they see, what they saw on the mountain. And he began his ministry, and the world came to concord with him. God happened in verse 1, and Jesus was full of the Holy Ghost, for he turned from Jordan after his baptism and was led into the wilderness. And he was there for 40 days and 40 nights. He did nothing. The devil came 13, verse 3 said, Turn this uh, stone to bread. And in verse 4, Jesus said, It is written that I shall not live by bread alone, but every word of the Lord. And it was 13. Now, when the devil ended all his temptation, he departed from a season. So, until you are transfigured, when the devil comes, he will eat you. But when you are transfigured, when you are transformed, you remain transfigured and transformed. Anytime the devil comes, you see very good around you and he leaves you alone. And look at it, said the devil leave Jesus for a season. So he keep coming and eating you where I pray. As he come, this is your transfiguration encounter. He will remain with you forever in the name of Jesus. You will be an ex-transfigured man in the name of Jesus. You will be an ex-transformed believer in the name of Jesus. No one will doubt your Christianity going forward. In Jesus' name, and it was working on Jesus' return in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And he went out of fame, and went throughout all the region, and taught in the synagogue. And he was glorified of all. And he came to the tabernacle, he was given the Bible to read in verse 16. And he opened the place where it was written of him in verse 17. He said, He opened the book of Isaiah, Isaiah and verse 18. He said, The Spirit of the Lord shall come because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He sent me to heal the broken heart and put deliverance to the captives, cover your sight to the blind, and to say that liberty them that are bruised. Said in verse 19 to preach the acceptable year of the Lord, and verse 20 said, He closed the book and gave them, and He told them that today is the scripture fulfilled in your eyes in verse 21. God will grant you an encounter of a lifetime in the name of Jesus. So, one more time, soft topic real benefit of true fasting and prayers. We're looking at the benefit of transfiguration and transformation. We went for that. Said, this is a total shift from the natural human realms to the definitive realms, that is, the glory realms, where one is totally changed. To God's like image in all aspects of life. Can read Daniel chapter 34 from verse 27, 35, Daniel 2, 16 to 48, 2 Corinthians chapter 3 from verse 17 to 18, Luke uh, 4, 1 to 15, and lastly, Mark chapter 9 from verse 2 down to 7. Please don't want to break at the leisure time. Read these scriptures again. You will certainly, certainly be blessed, and God will speak to you through them in Jesus' name. Lastly, let's recognize that without transfiguration and transformation, there can't be export. No, remember, God has promised us this month is going to be a month of what? Of great exploit and glory, fire, fast and prayer. Of course, this year is going to be a year of exceeding exploit and exceeding glory as well. Because glory and exploit are all spiritual blessings. Let's take that again. Lastly, let's recognize that without transfiguration and transformation, there can't be exploit nor glory. Because glory and exploit are all spiritual blessings. Remember, Elisha was transformed to an Elijah and did many more miracles than even his spiritual father, Elijah. Jesus has called you and I to do greater miracles and greater expert signs and wonders than him. So, what are you waiting for? Fast in truth, pray in truth, and you'll be transformed and transfigured to the fullness of Christ's nature.
and I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. However, we have to say first, we have to first say yes to Jesus and truth first before our fasting and prayer can secure for us transfiguration and trans and transfiguration and transformation. And I pray that will be your portion in Jesus' name. John chapter 14, from verse 10 down to 16, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one cometh unto the Father but by me. He said, If anyone know me, he has known the Father. He said, Of course, if you want to know Jesus, you want to know the Father, then come through Christ. In Galatians 3, he said, Christ has redeemed us from the cost of the Lord. Do you want your prayer altar to be on fire so that you be transfigured and transformed? So that you will look at sin and walk away from sin and sin. You know, you you look at corruption. You look at bribery and walk past it. You look at a woman that is not your wife as if you're not looking at anything. You don't want a dimension of grace. I want to pray with you. Place your hand in your chest, bow your head, and say, Jesus, I come to you this morning and I'm a sinner forgetting my sins and I come to the set for my sake to die for freedom. Right now, Jesus, I come to you to know the Lord and I say, you have mercy upon me. Wash me with your blood and write me in the book of life. Help me to make heaven after my journey here on the earth in the name of Jesus. Father, Transform and transfigure me by this encounter today. For in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We two prayers. First prayer, Father, as I wait in you, Jesus, I wait in you in truth, that season transfigured and transform me to your status and spiritual level to know that in the name of Jesus. Say that again. Jesus, as I shall wait on you in truth, that season transfigured and transform me to your status. And spiritual level to know aspect of my life in the name of Jesus. Don't forget John, John 14 6 uh, down to 7. We read that it said Jesus 17, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one coming to the Father but by me. If ye know me, ye have known my Father. And nobody said, We should come to the fullness and to the nature of Christ. And I see you being come, I see you being lifted to the level, to the nature of Christ in Jesus. And this on the sun say, Father, I shall wait on you to trust this season. Transform and transfigure me to your status and to your spiritual levels and all that of my life in the name of Jesus. I want to dress like you, Jesus. I want to talk like you, Jesus. I want to behave like you. I want to think like you. I want to pray like you. I want to act like you in all aspects of my life. So help me, Lord, in the name of Jesus. I say, I wait in you as I wait on you in truth. Even this is in transfigure and transform me to your status and your spiritual levels and all aspects in the name of Jesus. Last prayer, Father. In this season of waiting among the saints all across Nigeria and Africa, transform and transfigure many saints to Christ like nature indeed, that uh, win many souls to heaven in the name of Jesus. Matthew 28 and every 20 said, Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Teach them to observe to all that I have commanded thee, and I will be with you always, even unto the end of the world. So Jesus has commanded you and I to live like him and to do what he has been doing in this understanding. Say, Father, in that season of waiting among the saints in Africa, transform and transfigure many saints to Christ like nature indeed, that will win many souls to heaven in the name of Jesus. Thank you for this time. For in Jesus' name we pray, we pray, 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 share this gospel, and we bless from intercession. We should God blesses you tomorrow. I pray that this day will be a day of God's favor for you. You will see cause of favor. In the name of Jesus, God bless you. Transfiguration testimony.